G'day guys, it's Calvin from The Cartoon Company. I do a lot of 1UZ stuff, and today I'm working on a couple of EVTI 1UZ jobs. Primarily I'm removing the immobiliser, but I have a problem with the two different looms. So I've got one motor that we're sitting on at the moment, and that's set up to run, it's wide, ready to go. I do a lot of testing, but I've started seeing a lot more of the 170 series uh, 1UZ VVTi ECUs. All 1UZ ECUs are 89661, and then there's the part number. The earlier one motor, I'll have a bit of a look at that. So this is my early test motor. So it's about a, a, somewhere between 97 and 2000. It's got the big VVTi coils. Uh, they don't fit many other models, it's mainly just on these. The airflow meter, I've put my adapter on it that I make, and it's got this airflow meter with the wide bolt spacings. Uh, it's actually had a 3UZ fitting housing, uh, thermostat housing, which is another difference on the, on the 1UZ over the 3UZ. Hydraulic fan on this one at the moment, and the throttle body with the throttle cable, but as we've known from other videos, that is a drive-by-wire throttle. And the loom on it comes out the back of the engine. So this is off a, either, they're off either a 20 series, which th that's this one, or a 151-150 series crown. There are differences between those looms, but that's over in this department. The 20 series has this big, and I believe it's a 26 pin plug, body plug, whereas the crown has several smaller plugs. The, the second series of the 1UZ VVTi is like this one. Uh, they've changed the size of the breather. I've gone to a bigger breather. And they've gone to the smaller coils, very similar to it. Well, they're the same as a 3UZ. Uh, Alteza Gita is the same. So the smaller rectangle plug on them. Uh, and, and it doesn't matter which market they are in. The loom comes out the left-hand front. Sits under the engine bay, in a box under the engine bay. And another difference here, we've got four plugs from the engine. So the main engine loom control, which contains four ECU plugs, and there's one main, well there's two, but we'll, we'll talk about that in a moment. So there's four off the engine loom, and then it's got this series of plugs here. Very similar to a 151 Crown, but, but different again. But the Crown has the, the individual plugs like this. Whereas the Celsius or LS400 has the big 26 pin. Throttle body is the same. Most things are the same. Oh, they, these, these ones generally have an idler. So the big difference is the coils and this wiring loom coming out the front. You can interchange between engines, no problem, but you've got to swap those coils. I nearly got caught out on that front from the USA. Man had a late model engine and he sent me an earlier model loom, BBTI loom, and didn't tell me about the coils. But we caught it before it got sent away. So this one, loom out the front, which is, means your ECU is going to sit in the engine bay. So let's be aware of that. Going back to this one, these three plugs come from the engine loom. And I, I always say two. But there's actually a third one. This is the immobiliser plug at the end and there's some body functions if you're using an uh, automatic. So three main from the engine loom, which is different to the later model VVTi with the four from the engine loom. The problem I've been facing is I've got this engine all set up, ready to run and test. Got my fuel system. Uh, you'll see there's only one line. It's a returnless system, but only one fuel line going into the engine. And you don't want to go changing that because that's the way the engine's set up to run. The ECU has been calibrated to run returnless. So guys that go put a fuel pressure regulator on it, which changes the pressure differential across the ejector, are never going to run quite as good as they do with the proper fuel pressure setup and the returnless setup. But the big problem I'm having is when I go to test the later model ECU, like this one, so this one's out of the USA, it's getting a plug and play loom with some fuses. So I've made up this test loom. To make up the adapter, I have brand new plugs, if necessary, for all of those. And a note too, uh, if you do wire them as a manual, 
you will turn off the VVTI because they need the auto functions. I've got a little box that goes into them that restores the power that's lost when you remove the auto. To get this plug here, I sacrificed an ECU. Uh, this ECU looks like it's been dropped in a bucket of acid. There's like a white film all over it and I just couldn't get it to work. So I wasn't going to take the risk. It was overseas one. I scrapped it. However, I did carefully remove the header plug with the appropriate delicate tool. And that allowed me to make up my adapter in here. That allows me to plug into this loom, run that ECU, run my test relays and fuses on the bench and fire up the engine and check it goes. The later ECU runs a different airflow meter, it runs this one, which is the small cartridge one. So we swap that over, I've made a, again I've chopped into the test loom, put an extra plug on so I can change airflow meters. Just find my earmuffs. Do you know where I put my earmuffs? Um, yep, I got them. Yep. I just have to ask you when I normally find them. Thanks. Earmuffs are on. Fuel system's plugged in. Power it up. And... runs on that one we show that the engine is running which is nice I'm going to swap to the test loom so that ECU goes out this one comes in I have got a little bit more work to do on this loom yet you'll see I've made it all pink there's always guys trying to copy my work I haven't actually finished it for a reason and it's going to be pretty hard to copy when it's all pink. There's the loop. We'll just quickly plug the three plugs from the engine on that one. And these are quite different pinouts, uh, hence the need to make the adapter. Here's my immobilizer box. The light starts flashing. That's good. We're going to swap the airflow meter. I've made it easy fit with a zip tie and we plug that one in and that one there so a moment ago it was running on a it was actually a 151 crown ECU so it's a very it's the same pinout as a uh, 20 series Celsius and now We'll make it run on a 171 crown. That's a great way now that I've got to ensure when I'm doing an ECU, that especially if they're going overseas, like this one's going back to the USA, that I know the ECU runs, I know the wiring that I'm completing works like it should, and it's ready to go. I've got one more to test today, that one I've actually done a little bit different. Uh, this one is set up for a, a manual, the other one I'm going to do, the man's going to wire as an as a automatic. So we're going to swap that one out and we're going to test another one very quickly. I'll just show you a little bit of a difference. 
with this one being a little bit different and it's going to be wide as an auto the customer sent me down the the fifth plug or the e plug and the f plug and i've just tapped in the immobilizer box to the relevant wires i've run the power and earth into my immobilizer and i've left the immobilizer light wire which is a white orange wire going in and the customer can take care of the rest of it This uh, one is actually just going up to Auckland, a jet boat tour operation, but it's going in their road vehicle, it's not going in their jet boat. They do have a jet boat with an early UZ. So we're gonna power that up, and that light's gonna go out, which it does, it's perfect. And then I'll put my earmuffs on, and we'll start it up again. Get another one running and it's really helpful to have the adapter loom i did have a little issue i was i have not i'm yet to finish it off there's a couple of modifications i want to make in there and i did have a problem with the pink wire which was helpfully suggested by my co-worker i wasn't so happy and i did have to delete a few of the course a little bit of the course language this one can now go into a box, and I'm confident that it all works like it should. So when it gets to the customer, they know that the computer is, is doing its job. So I'm sure I'll be asked for pinouts for these engines. I don't supply pinouts. I do a full set of wiring instructions for them. So it's connect this wire to this wire. This is the wires in the body plugs. This is how you wire it up, a step-by-step -step process and it comes with diagrams. But I always call them wiring instructions, so if you want them, they are available. And if you need your mobilizer bypassed, I can do that as well. And, and now test all of them on a running engine, because I've got my test engine set up. So if that's helpful, and we'll talk to you again another day. Catch you later.